Uh, my name's Trent Dex and I am with ArborJet. Lori will be my demonstrator today and uh, we're going to start off first by measuring the DBH of the tree to determine how large it is. So Lori is going to put the tape around and come back to zero. And how big is it? 18. It's 18 inches. So that 18 inches will determine what rate of triage that we will be using for uh, the injection today. And we're going to start off with uh, Lori going ahead and drill the plugs first. And what she's going to be doing here is she's going to be drilling through the cambium of the tree until she hits the xylem and then she's going to go into the tree <coughs> so we can inject into it. She's inserting the plug into the tree right now. This serves as a way to hold the product into the tree but it also protects any diseases or pests coming into the tree. Now she's going to inject into the tree with our Viper system. <clears throat> it measures out three mils at a time when we're administering the product and she's going to insert it in. And then the injection would be complete with one injection point. <clears throat> we'll have multiple injection points depending on the DBH of the tree and that typically that's divided by three so there might be actually six sites on this tree to complete the injection and that's how we'll be on. It's a little early right now so we're not completing it but this is a good demonstration for you guys to see it. Um, over here to your my left if you guys look is two trees that are completely infested with it and those will be actually removed to give you an idea of what the so the the final one, the third one, will be actually be saved. We will be injecting that, and these two will be injected. To kind of give you an idea, they will be treated. But the second one there with the white paint on it will be removed because it's the infestation so far along. And typically we can save a tree that's 40 to 50% in decline. We can still save that tree and bring it back. But anything over 50%, we're going to remove the tree. The reason the city chose this method is it allows us to ensure that 100% of the chemical is delivered into the tree so that it will protect the tree for up to three years and that there'll be no exposure to the public. So what's the goal here? How many trees are infected and is this effective in putting a stop to this? I can't tell you an exact number for how many trees are infested. We went out and looked at every tree over the last seven months and when we observed infestation through woodpecker damage we marked that tree as infested. We have heavily infested trees over here so it's very likely that this tree is infested as well but it's still healthy and we can treat it. Treatment is effective for up to three years on a tree this size and uh, we could continue to do this every three years cost effectively. It'll cost us uh, $86 to treat this tree while removal and replacement would be $850. So we, we're not trying to stop the infestation, that's not possible. But we're trying to preserve our healthy ash trees in the landscape as long as a, is appropriate based on its health. So I won't say that this tree, I mean, it's going to die eventually. We, are, we looked at and have identified all our healthy trees. We'll treat all our healthy trees, and as time goes on, that population will continue to get smaller as a tree is damaged by lightning, by storm, by a car, removed because of a sewer or sidewalk, and we'll just continue to carry that population as long as it makes sense based on our resources. Can you also mention how homeowners can get Yes, their so uh, while we have about two to 3,000 ash trees on city-owned property, some of them are in places where we don't need to manage because if the tree fell, it'll never hit anybody. But there are 18,000 ash inside city limits. And homeowners often want to know, do I have an ash? Does it make sense to treat this ash? And that involves finding out what species of tree you have and determining its health. And 
and then looking at what your treatment options are. And for that, I usually, when people ask me about what they can do on their private property, I have them call Jesse Lyons, who's standing next to me. So you can build on what I already said, if you like. Sure, yeah, there's a lot of things a homeowner needs to know. Uh, one is about how to hire the right tree care professional to uh, assess their tree health, decide if they're going to remove their tree or to treat their tree, and to get a certified pesticide applicator who will be doing their treatment for them. Um, so they can call Cornell Cooperative Extension here in Onondaga County for help with that. It's also important to know that we can actually treat for up to 30 years before it'll equal the removal and replacement cost. So it's very economical to preserve our trees and save the urban forest. And I think that's what we want to put out there. It's worth it to save these trees because they mean a lot to us. We went and looked at every tree between October and April. And at that time, we observed woodpecker damage like this uh, on 85 trees. So at minimum, we had 85 infested trees. That would be a conservative number or a low number. Um, it takes three to five years three for five years. emerald ash borer to kill a tree. This is what we're looking for. Usually farther up in the canopy is we're looking for this woodpecker damage. And then there's an exit hole of a beetle right here. You have to really get up close if you want to see that. But the beetle emerges in sometime around now, end of May, early June. It flies to the same tree or a tree nearby, and it lays, the female lays 60 to 90 eggs. Those eggs hatch sometime during the summer, early fall, and start feeding on the tree, and that's what causes the damage. We consider trees infrastructure, they're green infrastructure, and they provide environmental benefits, and those benefits can be measured. Uh, a simple way to summarize is that uh, that tree is healthy, it provides shade, and that shade will lower heat, uh, cooling costs in the summer. It will reduce stormwater management costs for the municipality. Uh, the leaves capture particulate matter and keep it out of the atmosphere. Particulate matter that would, could otherwise end up in our lungs, uh, especially of our young and old, who would be the most vulnerable to that. Um, they're an anger management program. They impact our moods and our health, and they're a resource. And that's what we're trying to protect. And if someone, is this like a volunteer thing? So like someone says, I'll have one of these trees and it looks like it's infected and it gets fixed, or how does that, are you, are you is your, or are you with like going out and looking for these trees and fixing them? You mentioned the prices before, like how does that, right. someone? Well, I, I'm the city county arborist. I manage all the street trees and park trees that the city owns. So all the trees between curb and sidewalk are city responsibility. So as a manager of this resource, which is a publicly owned resource, we have to decide for public safety, are we going to keep the tree or are we going to remove the tree? The only way we can keep the tree is if we treat it. Otherwise, it'll be infested by the beetle. And if we do nothing, the tree will die. So no matter what, this is going to cost us money. So we're deciding how we want to manage our resource, and we're doing that by assessing the health of every tree and deciding do we treat it or remove it.